compassion, the kindness, and the hope in the world today. Welcome to Just Peace Sunday. We come as we are today, troubled or weary, grateful or grumpy, sad or joyful, uncertain for the future, forgiving in our confessing, caring for our cares, and upholding one another in time of need. But no matter what we are feeling today, we know that God is among us gathered here, guiding us toward compassion, kindness, and hope in the days to come. After the benediction in today's very short service, we will recognize Ted Bradley's long-term service among us, followed by a concert and the picnics that people have brought. And as you know from all of my emails and reminders, we do have first, second, and third place prizes for the most creative or most attractive picnic setup. Please be sure to check the announcements also in your bulletin in the back. Please join me now in our call to worship, printed in your bulletin. We pray that your spirit liberate and lead us in the laboring for healing for the broken. So move in and among us that we may grow in your spirit. Jordan. Thank you, Donna, for being here. Thank you. Oh, take me down to the river of Jordan. Lay me down, my sword and shield. Let peace abound by the river of Jordan. We all go down. And I will lay down my sorry weapons. I will pay with brick and stone. Take away what peace to heaven. Build a bridge where the waters flow. Take me down to the river of joy. Let peace abound by the river of 
John 2nd 1 through 10 about the wedding at Cana where Jesus changes water into wine on the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee Jesus mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding when the wine was gone Jesus mother said to him they have no more wine dear woman why do you involve me Jesus replied my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you, you have saved the best till now. Friends, as you know, we are living in unprecedented times. And we, knew we need to discover creative and new ways to live in a world that is radically different from what has been before. These words from a prayer by African-American philosopher theologian, educator, and civil rights leader, Howard Thurman, back in the mid-1900s, ring true for this time we are in today. Howard Thurman wrote, we do not know how to do what we know to do. We do not know how to be what we know to be. But even in the midst of not knowing how our lives would be affected over the last seven months, I believe that this congregation has known how to move forward, how to keep moving. We have remained the body of Christ in our worship, our small gatherings, and in our service ministries. We have held each other up when illness, personal challenges, and the navigating of doing church differently stretched us in ways that we could not have imagined. Tomorrow is International Peace Day, where we are called with our brothers and sisters in all 195 countries around the world to build a vision and practice of compassion, kindness, and hope for each and every person, and for all of God's creation. On this Just Peace Sunday, may we drink deeply from the fountain of peace, know peace deeply in ourselves, live in peace with our neighbors, and stand up and show up to create peace in the world today. Jesus changed water into wine at a wedding at Cana in Galilee so long ago. And today, how are we being called to change water into wine metaphorically? What miracles might be in store for us, for this church? And how might we see to it personally that we are indeed part of a miracle and where in our own lives 
is the opportunity to change water into wine, to be what we know to be, a beacon of compassion, kindness, and hope when we and the world need it more than ever before. We bless the Holy One, creator of wholeness, source of peace, as we are also blessed. Amen. This is a poem by Jan Richardson, Peace is in Our Hands. When there was no wine, there was you, and you said, drink. And there it was, startling and sweet. When there was no bread, there was you, and you said, touch. And there we were, our hands looking like yours. And where there is no peace, there is you. And you say, lay down your arms. And here we are, holding one another in loving embrace. Peace is in our hands. Amen. This is a poem, Break Open Our Hearts, by Mary Lou Kaunaki, a feminist peace activist. Spirit of justice, break open our hearts. Break them wide open. Let anger pour through like strong arms, cleansing us of complacency. Let courage pour through like spring storms, flooding out fear. Let zeal pour through like blazing summer suns, filling us with passion. Forces of justice, grant me anger at what is. Courage to do what must be done. Passion to break down the walls of injustice. And build a, a lamp flowing with milk and honey for God's beloved. God's special love, God's poor ones. Spirit of justice, Break open our hearts. Would you pray with me, please? God of peace, you are our strength and salvation. You are our hope and deliverer of all that is good and just. In the midst of fear and uncertainty in our lives, and when the powerless of the world are overwhelmed by mighty forces, recall us to our true source of help. For all those who suffer injustice, we offer the longings of our hearts in prayer. We seek for them, O gracious one, the gifts that are dear to us. Food for the table, drink for the soul, shelter in the night, loving arms to welcome us. Awaken us again, O God, to your presence within us. Awaken us again to hope. Today, we especially hold in prayer, Linda, Earl, Ashley, Anissa, and all who are ill, receiving medical treatments, or facing daily challenges. And we also hold up the life of RBG. We remember and celebrate all the accomplishments and her laughter, the courage and commitment. We stop to be so very grateful before we begin to be so very sad. For she protected the most vulnerable and lifted the tambourine for freedom and justice. Thank you and rest in power, Justice Ginsburg. Amen. Today, we also gather our offerings of resources, service, and time for the dedication and work of this church in our community and beyond. May we give generously. Amen. Friends, as we conclude our worship service, please accept this blessing. May we walk good paths, O oh God, living on this earth as brothers and sisters should, rejoicing in one another's blessings, 
sympathizing in one another's sorrows, and loving and serving all God's people. May peace be with you this day and always. Amen. I'd like to now call Laura up for a moment of recognition and whoever else is coming up. So, this makes me so sad, but um, you all know that Ted is leaving and he's been a key member of our beloved community of Friends in Christ for a long time. 27 years. He's been an incredible asset to our church over the years. He has served with dedication and imagination. Not only has he enriched us with his talent as a director, but he has opened our church to the wider community, sharing some uh, unique <laughs> and wonderful music programs. No one will ever forget the Phantom of the Opera, or well, I don't remember what that piece was where we sang with whale sounds. Misagaya. Ah, Misagaya. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no way, Ted, to thank you for all you've done. Um, we have a, a token here, some um, gift cards to Lowe's. <laughs> and uh, and Sweet Evelina's and Duncan. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say that 23 years ago I came to this church and um, well, I had not had music in my life from a performing standpoint for many, a long many years and um, Ted said, hey, would you like to join the choir? And I was like, oh, God, i got small children. I don't know. Yeah, let me give it a try. And um, I just cannot thank Ted enough for all the years of fun and, and patience and the great grace that we, in which he led, has led us through these years and taken us on all kinds of adventures musically. I am just so incredibly grateful for these years in the choir and then finally having the wherewithal and the courage to try bells at the end of this process. But I, I just am so, so incredibly grateful and appreciative. And I hope that he, Ted, I hope that you will continue to bring your musical gifts to our community as you have. And I will be very excited to be a part of any of those projects. Although right now the only one that is wanting to hear my voice is the person who drives with me in the morning, the absentee person in my car because my voice is so terrible. But, um, you know, I need practice set. I need a lot of practice set. But I'm just, I'm just so grateful, and I just do, I do hope that you will bring other projects to the community, and I will be there right with you as a fledgling alto. Good afternoon, and thank you, Ted. I am obviously probably one of the newest of the singing choir. And so I listen to the discussions as we're doing the practices, and... Uh, discussing this uh, approach to that, using these words, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm a plumber. But, and on top of that, I'm one of the four, three, or at, at one time we had five different bases, and he could look right at me and say, you gotta try it this way. I said, oh. <laughs> so as a, uh, a love of his hearing, his bringing me along and encouraging me, uh, it's only been eight and a half years. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think I unplugged it. <laughs> I'm a latecomer in every way. Yeah, I got here about almost six years ago now. Alone, new town, didn't know anybody, living in an empty house, essentially no key. And live Putnam called me up and said, you going to the Italian dinner? What's that? She said, oh, meet me at the church in 15 minutes. So I did. Sat me down. And she said, this is Ted, music director. Well, I'd met him. Ian had introduced us. And Ted said, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, uh, are you here now? And I said, uh, I, I live here. And he said, well, you know, are you here now? 
I said, uh, it's my legal address. He said, no, no, no. Are you here tomorrow? Yes. Why? And he said, want to sing in the choir? I said, what makes you think I sing? He said, well, you have a cello. Anybody who has a cello can sing. I said, it's been 40 years. He said, I don't care. You can read music. Be there at 845. So, okay, I did. And I came, and it was wonderful. I've never been part of a church. I had been in a glee club 40 years before, and I don't remember what we sang that first morning. But I was taken elsewhere. Ted showed me back the way to the music that kept me sane when I was very young. And on the way out the door that day, he said, see you 7.30, see you at, what was it, 7.30 on Thursday night? I said, what? A lot of what? And he said, well, you're in the choir now. There's practice. I said, I'm in the choir? He said, you don't want to be? I said, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So I came to the choir. That proved to be the anchor that kept me here, that kept me tethered, that got me through the winter of isolation and solitude. That was the winter of blizzards every week at my first driveway to keep clear. The years here have been filled with an amazing variety of stuff. I missed out on the Missagaya. I missed out on the big town concerts and things like that. But the unending inventiveness, the ideas that came up of things that you could do with a small group or maybe just it needs to be done and we'll do it with a small group anyway. <laughs> and it happened. It made it happen every time. You gave us all a sense of, it's not togetherness, it's not camaraderie, but we would meld like the Lensmen, if any of you have read any science fiction that's that old, we would meld into something that made a portal for us to reach heaven for a few moments. I don't know what it sounded like to you. I mean, there were days when I know what it sounded like to you. But it was our transportation. And Ted showed the door week after week, event after event. And to lose the vision, the ability to see through the portal and say, we can do that. That's for us. We can give that back. I thank you for the gift to my life. And I thank you for what you have done in this community for all these years that reverberated into my present. I hope that you find a landing place that liberates the music in you in all the different ways that you're moved to. Thank you, thank you all. It's been my privilege to be music director here for 20 some odd years. And uh, you do anything for that long, it becomes part of you. I got one that's called uh, Burn the Barn. This is a, a song about how they used to have a good time all night long singing and dancing and having a great time. And this is the celebration part that comes through for me. So uh, here we go with Burn the Barn. Yeah. Tonight we're coming to your town. Gonna fire up that bluegrass sound. Gonna tune your banjo, play like Scruggs and Bill Monroe. Cause tonight <clears throat> we're burning down the barn. Burn the barn, burn the barn, burn the barn, burn the barn. tonight we'll burn down the barn. We're gonna sing, we're gonna play, gonna dance the night away, cause tonight we're burning down the barn. 
We'll ride the Bluegrass Express. Pick and sing all the songs we love the best. Play some smoke along the tracks, ride the rails, and don't look back. Cause tonight we're burning down the barn. Burn the barn. Burn the barn. Burn the barn. Tonight we'll burn down the barn. We're gonna sing, we're gonna play, we're gonna dance tonight away. Cause tonight we're burning down the barn. So lay your weary tunes on down. <clears throat> Let your troubles fall like ashes on the ground. Pat your feet and sing along. Don't play a bluegrass song. Cause tonight we're burning down the bar. Burn the barn. Burn the barn. Burn the barn. Tonight we're burning down the barn. We're gonna sing, we're gonna play, gonna dance and night away, cause tonight we're burning down the bar. Take it, Michael. Tonight we're coming to your town. Gonna fire up that bluegrass sound. We're gonna tune the old banjo, play like Scruggs and Bill Monroe. Cause tonight we're burning down the barn. Burn the barn! Burn the barn! Burn the barn! Tonight we're burn down the barn. We're gonna sing, we're gonna play, gonna dance the night away. Cause tonight we're burning down the bar. We keep it up, turn it up, and raise it to the ground, and stay until the morning comes around. Burn the barn, burn the barn, tonight we'll burn down the barn. We're gonna sing, we're gonna play, gonna dance the night away, cause tonight we're burning down the bar. This is a tune about kids who are kind of sick and tired of picking up that wood and stacking it and then getting it into the wood stove. But it also means that they stay warm over the winter, so we'll see how it goes. Till the job's complete Picking up wood from that big old pile Helping out mom, just look at her smile Picking up wood cause the temperature's low May I come inside and start to snow My feet are cold, my hands are sore I've done this job many times before My clothes are wet, wood's a giant bore Keeping us warm, it's not so awful. Picking up wood, 
warms us twice a night And that little shore feels nice Woods are for truck, but clothes in luck And that's not the stack, it's killing my back Finally from the rack into the flames I got my job, I can't be blamed I just want to say a word for Ted before I sing this next song. Um, you know, it was always the music that drew me to church for many, many years, and um, it's what got me here. And I remember, you know, back in the 90s, maybe late 80s or 90s, I'd say things like, oh, you know, first church of Woodstock, it's like, it's like being a Quaker or a Unitarian, only with way better music. And it's really what, and it was way better music than, you know, most places. I loved the challenge of the many, the eclectic pieces that Ted has had us do. Um, my voice is very squeaky because I missed the weekly workout <laughs> choir rehearsal and singing on Sunday. Um, because there hasn't been much impetus to do much singing, you know, in isolation. And I'm just going to say that I'm sorely going to miss the music of this church. This is a song I wrote a long time ago for my album, Tangle with the Moon. It's um, called I Do Believe, and it's a love song. And no matter what comes around us, it's always about the love. Un, deux, trois. I do 
you believe you'll always love me? Like a star's revolution up above you, fishes swim down in the deep blue sea. Oh yes, those fishes swim down in the deep blue sea. I just wanted to say, uh, Holly said pretty much, uh, I thought it was an amazing little tribute she gave. All I can say, Ted, is thank you, thank you, thank you. The next tune we're going to do is a tune, uh, the words were written by Woody Guthrie back in, I believe, the 40s, and maybe earlier. And nobody knew about it until he died, and the family found hundreds of poems that had no music to them. So the family decided they'd ask people to write tunes to some of the poems. His son Arlo picked this this uh, this poem, and he he wrote some music to it. It's called "My Peace." <laughs> Side of Lonely, and it's also from my Tango with the Moon album. 
during my Tex-Mex phase of that album. It started out as Gypsy Jazz, and then it was Swing, and then it was American Songbook. And this is one of a couple of songs that have definite uh, Tex-Mex flavor when I traded in my cowboy hat for a bolero. <laughs> But this song has new meaning through the eyes of the pandemic, because when I wrote this, as with many songs that I write, I, I, they're kind of miniature novelettes. And in this story, there's a young woman, they live in this, she lives in the city, and she lives in an apartment building that has kind of a horseshoe shape so that she can see um, the window of somebody on her floor on, one, on the opposite wing. And um, she's very lonely, she's moved to the city, she doesn't know anybody. And at night, um, she can hear his radio playing. And so, and, and she watches him. Sometimes he dances by himself in his room. And um, I imagine that this is a story that came true on many occasions in the cities, especially this spring when people were quarantined and isolated and feeling very lonely. Thank you. You do not know me, but I live next door, apartment to be, here on the second floor, and I love to listen to your radio, dancing in your room, all alone. And I live on the other side of loneliness, whispering only to your voice they have no more. I am the fingers on the curtain, shadow and uncertain. I hear you walking down the hall. I'm whispering 